What's up, man? What's going on? You got me? What's up? Yep, I got you. <laughs> I'm, you know, just uh, hanging out in the house. I'm ready for the pandemic to be over so we can go about everyday business again. <laughs> oh, definitely. I, I feel that, too. Oh, man. Uh, have, have, like, you been able to keep yourself busy and all? I know you started a blog and all, but, like, have, have you been able to work you out at all? Out there yeah, I'm actually – yeah, yeah, I'm, I actually am working out right now um, back home in California. I was working out in, in Iowa a lot, too, because I had a house there where I had a little in, in-home in uh, gym, so that was really nice. But now I'm out here working out with, you know, some of the guys that I trust and, uh, you know, call family. Awesome, cool. All right, so uh, before we get into uh, the questions, I'll just do an intro. So this is uh, Temple's new transfer quarterback. We are – Excited to have you join Al's, Al's Nation and all. Uh, yes, sir. He is a speaker. He's also got a good arm and all. So we uh, cannot wait for him to come out there for us. To show it out. Appreciate you. Appreciate all you. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll start with the basic questions first, and then, and then we'll get into football. So just so everybody know, what uh, part of Cali are you from? Yes, I'm from Southern California, the Inland Empire. Um, my city called Eastvale. Not, it's not too well known. Um, cause it's relatively a new city, but, uh, Southern California. Okay. Um, and then what age did you start playing football at? Shoot. Uh, I mean, since I came up the womb really, but you know, I was playing flag until I could play tackle football at seven. Okay. Um, and then if, if you can remember, um, talk about some of your, um, so like just to educate us with like the high school recruiting, so, like, when when did they notice you? Like, did they notice you at a young age? You're a speed and arm at, like, sixth, sixth grade or fifth fifth grade? <laughs> uh, we're talking about, like, going to high school or, like, recruitment for college? Yeah. Uh, so, we'll get into the high school first. Yes. Yeah, so okay. Just, yeah. Like, so, I went to, uh, you know, a pretty good little youth football league. There's kind of a feeder team. Like, power high schools in Southern California. Um, I – Ended up going to St. John Bosco, which I just came off winning, you know, a national championship. That was really just a family decision, and we felt like that was one of the best for my future, you know, trying to go to college and whatnot. So, I mean, it wasn't really, like, recruiting or anything like that for the most part. Uh, nowadays, oh. it might be, but back then, yeah, you know, five years ago, six years ago, they wasn't doing all that. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, thank you for sharing that with us, because, like, I know here in Philly, like, a lot of the powerhouse, so, like, Everyone likes going to St. Joe's prep here, so I don't know if you heard of them through, like, the rankings and all because they got, like, Marvin Harrison Jr. there who's absolutely killing it, and he just uh, committed to Ohio State. They got uh, former Eagle, uh, Trotters, both both kids are there. So that's, like, all that we have here in Philly. No, definitely. Uh, every state, you know, got their team and whatnot, and yeah. that was really cool. You know, come from St. John Bosco, we were able to, you know, travel across the country and, you know, play other powerhouses. That's awesome. Uh, so, obviously, you have a ton of memories at St. John Bosco, but what would you say was your favorite memory? My favorite memory from Bosco? Um, probably uh, beating Cent- Corona Centennial in the uh, – it was like CIF Southern Section. Um, that game was probably – stands were full with about – how much does that stadium sit? Probably – 12,000 or so, but it was just really a great atmosphere and to able to, you know, we were, my whole office was clicking on all cylinders. And so it was really, it was a shootout game. It was a good game to watch. It was a good game to be a part of. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, man. I can't imagine a high school uh, place here. <laughs> oh, 12,000, man. Crazy. Exactly. <laughs> um, so this is one of my favorite questions too. So I, I kind of like to get into the athlete's head a little bit. So like, when did you know that you were ready to be a Division One football quarterback? Like, it, it could have been before high school or it could have been during high school. But when did you know that you were a D1 quarterback? Um, I think just growing up and, you know, watching college football, you're, you're, you're rooting for so many teams and you're just thinking to yourself, you know, can you, can you make it? Like, you know what I'm saying? Are you taking the right steps to get there yeah. and whatnot? I mean, to be honest – I just always, like, whether it was track or football, try to just compete against the best. And that really – I didn't really focus on, you know, trying to be a D1 quarterback or when I really, like, realized it, I'd say. I, I'd say I always just competed to be the best version of myself. And, okay. you know, and I guess that's Division One. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so just continue to, to strive to just better myself. Okay. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to get into the show. Uh, of course, uh, you're on the uh, Netflix show, QB1 Season 2. So how did that come about? Like, did they reach out to you, or did they have to talk to the school first in order to have the cameras and all there? Yeah, so they reached out to me first on Twitter, um, kind of late in the game because they didn't uh, yeah. really film much of our summer football, whereas the other seasons, of uh, other uh, quarterbacks, you could see their summer football leading up. Our started yeah. off like first game type. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, I had to ask the coaches and they were down. You know, my school, the school wasn't really down for it. As if you notice, they're not really like filming me in class. They have like some shots of classrooms, but nothing of me actually in class. So that they didn't want, really want to showcase, but they were all for the football aspect of it. Oh, cool. Okay. And then, um, of course, it's like awesome. It's really exciting to show like you in front of a lot of people and I'm sure it, it grew your followers on Instagram and all, but was it like kind of tiring to have the camera in your face nonstop or did you get used to it? Yeah, I think uh, over time you get used to it and you really just start to have fun with it because you go closer to the camera crew and whatnot. And then obviously all your friends are, you know, trying to be famous, saying stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's having a good time with it. Um, so I think uh, over time I just got used to it. Okay. And um, did uh, you like how the season turned out? Because, like, I know, like, of course, I also watched The Last Chance at the U. So, like, I know, like, Malik Henry really didn't like the way that they portrayed him. But were you satisfied with how seasons went? Uh, it's kind of funny. I'm actually posting a YouTube video tomorrow. Oh, are you? It's a, it's a, it's a Q&A, yeah. And um, it's already been recorded. And somebody had asked me a similar question, so – uh, I guess stay tuned for a similar okay. answer to that, but okay. it's it was it's pretty much. I think some I think editing is uh, interesting. I, I only think they added or they put in parts that I felt were necessary, but they made yeah. it good TV. I'll tell you that much. So sure. that's sure. all that really matters for them. But personally, I mean, I'd like to see a couple couple altercations. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it's something I can go back to in the future and you know see that adversity and build off of it. Oh, of course, yeah. Awesome answer. Okay. And then, um, of course, if you could educate us, too, like, for those that are, like, college football fans, but they don't know what, like, the recruiting process is like. So, like, if you could tell us, like, some of the offers and, like, when, when you were getting looked at. And then uh, the second part of the question, how did you wind up choosing Iowa State as, as your school? Yeah, so um, I uh, was fortunate enough to – fortunate enough to play in the uh, CIF Southern section my sophomore year. The starting quarterback got hurt, came wow. in. We ended up losing the game, but, you know, I played pretty well and caught the eye of some schools. So my sophomore year is when I got my first offer to uh, – I think they're, they're at FCS school. But Utah was my second offer uh, okay. soon after that. Still my sophomore year before my junior season. Um, that was kind of, you know – Awesome, just get a Pac-12 look like that, you know, especially being from the West Coast. But it kind of, in a way, the way offers work, it's like as soon as you get a couple, it just starts to kind of roll in a sense. Yeah. So I think after I got my first couple, you know, I was attracting a lot of attention and uh, was able to uh, – I think Iowa State was my 10th or 11th offer. Wow. Um, I ended up with 20, but – Iowa State, for me, kind of separated. It was always like Iowa State. I really didn't have a top five. That was much of a battle. I, I, I really fell in love with uh, Ames in the community there and wanted to be a part of Iowa State um, early. And then what was the second part of your question? Um, how did you wind up choosing Iowa State? Yeah, so I kind of, like I, like I said, fell in love with uh, the community and the players there. I really felt like the players were, were hungry to win. And, you know, that's something I really wanted to be a part of. Um, and so that's kind of what really, not necessarily just the coaches, but the players in the community really led me, uh, to pick Iowa State. Oh, okay. And then, um, obviously you were there for two seasons, so you were redshirted. Um, but what was the experience like there? Just like, you know, just getting in the everyday routine of, uh, college ball and stuff. And what were some of the stuff they were able to pick up on? Yeah, I think, you know, come from my high school, at least it wasn't too crazy of a, of a transition. Um, from high school to college. I mean, I didn't necessarily have to wake up as early as I did in high school. 
though. So that was kind of a, a bummer in the beginning. I ended up enrolling early. Um, so it was winter workouts, like okay. second week I was there. So that was kind of new for me. But I just went in with the mindset of just trying to compete, be the best version of myself and, you know, try to lead the other guys around me as a young guy. Okay. Okay. And then my last question about Iowa State in this whole entire interview. Uh, um, so what was – what was the emotions like? Uh, so, on September 21st, you had a hell of a game. Um, you ran in a touchdown. You threw a pass. So, what was that excitement like against uh, UL Monroe? Yeah, um, it was a good day. Um, did some really good things in that game. I was really hoping that, you know, I was going to be able to, to play more throughout the season just off of that little sample size I was able to produce. Um but after the game, it was kind of just surreal because, you know, you're seeing yourself on TV and, and it's actually like, yo, you can do this type of thing. Um, and, you know, you always know and believe you can do it, but actually seeing it, I feel like it's something different. Um, so just being able to see it in action because, you know, I try to, you know, play like it's a game every practice anyway. So I'm doing stuff like that, you know, every day in practice anyway. So just seeing it, you know, in, in live action was special. Um, and I'm just excited to bring that to Temple. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, and now and now we're getting to some Temple stuff. Um, so what was the emotions like? I mean, like, we're, we're, we're not to talk about why you left, Iowa, but, like, just, just to talk in general of um, – so what was, like, the emotions like of just, you know, finding that school of where you could use the rest of your eligibility to be a starter and then also, you know, just make an impact into that program? Yeah, I think anytime you uh, enter the portal, you're taking a leap of faith because, you know, you're leaving – from somewhere that most of the time it's your decision to leave anyway. Um, so I was excited just to take that leap of faith. And Temple reached out to me second day, maybe first day I was in the portal, um, which I which I thought was pretty special. And I respect that of them, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they knew what they wanted and they went ahead and went after it. And that was me. Um, but no, I'm just really excited to get to Philadelphia. I'm not really too sure when I'll be, but uh, I know it's, it'll be in the near future. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Um one second, sorry about that. Um Okay. So so like what were your so so like was like the reason why you chose Temple was because they they like showed more more love to you or did you feel that you would fit well with like Anthony being a senior and then you could have a two years of starting there, you know? Yeah, I think both of those were uh factors in my decision. Um the whole staff was reaching out to me really feeling like you know, uh, mentors to me and, and people I can look up to and, and learn from. And obviously the quarterback situation with, you know, Anthony being a senior uh, and obviously him leaving next year, you know, they kind of want me to take over the reins then. And, you know, that's what I'm working towards every day. Okay. And then, like, I've been reading comments. So, like, I'm, like, new to this whole portal thing. So, like, if you could educate us too. So, like, a lot of people have questions too. So, like, say if your waiver is not approved, so do you have three years of eligibility or is it just or, – or, like, would you have to sit out this year and then you would just have the two years? Right. So right now I'm currently in the process of appealing to get my third year because technically I would have to sit out. Okay. Um, I think it's really likely that I will get that year. The NCAA will grant me that year and I'll be eligible this season just in case anything happens. Okay. Um, and then one, one thing I learned about you, too, is that you love giving back to the community. So, like, on, on season two, I really liked, before you started school and all, that you went out to your youth football and you were, like, helping them out. So, like, what, what type of impact are you, are you looking to do uh, on, in, in North, North Philly or how are you trying to get involved in, into the community? Oh, shoot, you kind of you went out. I heard you say, you know, how I was helping out with, my youth team, and then what would you say after that? I'm uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, it might be my uh, connection here, too. Um, so, like, what are some of the ways how you're looking to impact the community here in Philly? Yeah, shoot. I'm down for whatever, honestly. I know when I went to Iowa State, I went ahead and, and joined the Green Dot um, movement, and that's a, a movement and organization which brought awareness to, uh, like, domestic violence and all forms of violence. And I was a really big advocate for that. I was able to get their logo on our football helmets, you know, doing anything I could to really, you know, make Green Dot known. I think if Temple, I'm not too sure, actually, but if Temple has a Green Dot organization, I'd love to join that and bring okay. more awareness that way. But it's really just trying to, you know, get involved with 
you know, the community in any way I, and I can help and that's, you know, manageable for me at that time. But yeah, I'll definitely look into that as soon as I get on campus. Yeah, I think you're going to like it here because they do a lot with the kids too. So like they usually go to Camden a lot too and help and help the kids there. And they also do like a lot of, a lot of like help, help with like the community too. Like, like whether it's like helping with like groceries or food drives and all. So like you'll, you'll love all that. Definitely. No, yeah, I definitely look forward to that. Yeah. Um, and then has has a temple told you about this single digit um, tradition that we do? Yeah, yeah, they definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, that is that is an honor because like a lot a lot of guys wore it like uh, P J Walker, Matt Matthew Medikavich and all. So yeah, that's a definitely something to try to get. Like maybe whether it's this this year or even or even next year. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, I I was number six coming from Iowa State. Uh, always was a number 11, though, and that's kind of what I wanted to go back to. So it was either that or one. I was really feeling one for a second. <laughs> I was like, yo, I could wear one next year. And they told me this, you know, single digit thing. And I'm like, ah, that's tough. But um, I think just over the time when I'm there, hopefully, you know, I'll become, you know, the leader and, and, and show my leadership characteristics and that, you know, I'll, I'll be able to upgrade to that number one. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Um, so I think we touched up a little bit on it too. Um, so this, so this is my last question with, uh, Temple. And then I got two more fun ones for you. Um, so like, what are, what are like some of your goals? Uh, once, once you come to Temple, like, uh, what do you, what, like, what are you uh, trying to do like on, on, on the field or where do you want to get the team to go? Yeah, I think, uh, short answer and long answer to that. Short answer, I think is just trying to do whatever I can to help the team, you know, beat Miami the first week of the season, yeah. of this upcoming season. Um, and then a long-term answer is obviously win an AAC championship and, um, you know, see where that takes us. But, you know, I'm a winner at heart. I plan on winning. That's what I work towards every day. Um, and I just can't wait to, you know, show the people what I'm really about. Yes, yes, sir. Definitely. Yeah, this was our last one um, in 2016 against uh, yes, Navy. Sir. We, yes, we sir. I yeah. see it. <laughs> as, as you being – in the QB one, so hopefully I, I got I get some more of these. Oh yeah, no <laughs> doubt. I got you. Yep. All right. So my last two are fun ones, and then I'm gonna let you go again. Thank you so much for your time. Um. So if you could have dinner with three NFL quarterbacks, uh, who who would they be, and where would you take them to eat? Uh, first one, Kyle Murray. Um, I feel like I got some Kyle Murray traits. Uh, you know, I, and all these guys I'm gonna strive to you know be better than. Um, but definitely Kyle Murray. Where would I take him? I don't know. He looked like a Canes type of dude. So he might have to slide to Canes or something like that. Um, <laughs> and then Deshaun Watson would be my second. Perfect. Uh, love, the, love him at Clemson. Love the way he, he spins it now. Um, he looked like a hibachi steak type of dude. So we're going to go get some Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then third quarterback, I'm going to go with – Ooh, it's tough. Either Russell Wilson or Drew Brees, just, you know, because they're a little older and can, right. you know, feed me some wisdom. And they look like they like a home-cooked meal. So, we're going to – I'm going to go ahead and uh, go over to their place and see what, they, what they're working with. All right, good. Yeah, I was uh, sweating on the last one because if you said Dak, then the whole comment <laughs> section would have been nuts. I was like, oh, my God, please, please, please do not right, say Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my last question, have – have you had a Philly cheesesteak yet? I mean, I'm not uh, talking about the ones that are, like, on the West Coast or the Midwest or anything, but have you been to Philly and had a cheesesteak? I have not. No? I have not. Looking forward to it, though. Definitely. All right, cool. Yeah, um, so from, like, a lot of people, they are said to recommend Jim Steaks to you on South Street. And, okay, uh, Jim Steaks yeah, on South and, Street. Yeah, and, and to order your cheesesteak, uh, so you say the cheese – so, so like for instance, if you want an American, and then you have to say wit, meaning with fried onions. But like if you don't want it, just just say an American no. So. Okay. No, yeah, I appreciate that. But I'm a plain dude. Onions, they for sure not gonna be on there for me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm playing with it. So it's not gonna be too much going on with the sandwich. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. So I'm a season ticket holder after I graduated. So of course I'll probably meet you at the season ticket holder party. So. Looking awesome. forward to more too, um, Riel. We're all excited 
to have you and all, and we cannot wait to meet you and see you on the field soon. So thank you so much. Hell yeah, I appreciate it. And I uh, can't wait to get out there. Yes, sir. All right. All right now. Good. I'll see you around soon. Okay, sounds good. All right, I'll see you around. Bye. Bye.